All right, and welcome to both of you, one of which is probably me. Uh, one of my videos, my review, has been doing the rounds for a while now, several months in fact. So I thought it was finally time to make an actual review that doesn't start with the words this is not a review, because this is. And of course I have already reviewed the Rhino, which you again can't see, uh, in the Pellet magazine several months ago. But I won't tell you anything about that. Go buy the magazine, cheap bastards. So anyway, I think it's about time to get going. So first of all, before we do get going, if I was a total dick, I would be doing this in a forget drive again. Okay? And yes, this is set to full power now, by the way, so if Walmis is watching, he's probably sweating or something. Which is kind of nice, because I'm a total dick. I like that stuff. So the two major caveats you have to keep in mind is that, first of all, uh, relatively few people have been using the Rhino for a relatively short period of time. So. It's hard to say anything about uh, the durability. Uh, it's made of something like MDF or plywood and printed parts, some metal stuff. I don't know, it's a mechanical thing with electricity in it and uh, all of that stuff tends to break at some point. The question is when and how and uh, I just don't know. And I'm not saying that I have any specific reason to believe that it will break down especially quickly, but for the sake of a review, I really can't say anything about the durability. It looks fine, but we just don't know. And the other major caveat is that I've never even seen a Brunner live. I've heard of it, I made my own decision to go with the Rhino. But since I have never tried one, I won't say anything about it, and that makes it kind of difficult to say anything about the state of the art anyway, because I don't know the competition. So keep those two things in mind as we get going. Now first of all... Wow, this is just amazing, isn't it? Like a floppy stick, what could be better? So I'll show you that. The reason the stick is floppy is because the weight of the elevator is pulling it down. Okay, that's not going to give you kills or anything else, but at least for me, simulators are like a fulfillment of a 40 year old, year old dream of flying all kinds of planes. And for that, this kind of detail is super important. Now the software support is going to be whatever. The Rhino actually supports, supports direct input and gets force feedback natively when it's supported. But the way games handle uh, mostly IL2, DCS, Flight Simulator, X-Play, how they handle force feedback varies greatly. Uh, Sturmovic has kind of OK, uh, DCS varies. And the rest just don't have a native implementation. More about that later. But this is kind of a really neat feature. Uh, not that useful to be honest, but like I said, this is what I've been dreaming about for the longest time. Now, let's see what happens when I turn the engine on. Now the airflow starts blowing on the elevator and the stick starts going stiffer and now it's vibrating in the airflow. Seems that there's some kind of turbulent airflow going when the propeller blows air on the ground and then bounces off into the elevator. I think personally this is kind of just marvelous stuff actually. Right? 
here, so... Yeah, that's kind of nice. And the special thing you need to understand about this plane, and the reason I chose this specific plane to fly in this review, is because, well, it's a dick move and I'm a dick, and so it fits. But the reason it's a dick move is because this is the worst case scenario for the Rhino. The Drydecker was basically built to fly in the stratosphere. Like where it, there's like no oxygen and it's million degrees minus. I mean, I can only imagine that the pilots when they come home from a sortie, if they come home, They've suffered from hypoxia, they are frozen to death, and they're looking at the trenches below, seeing people drowning in their own shit, and thinking that, yeah, I'm going to ask for a transfer right now. But the reason I chose this plane, and why it's such a big move, is because uh, it's horribly out of trim below the stratosphere. So I'm constantly working to keep the plane from basically flipping over. I'm having to push hard on the stick. And I'm going to come back a bit later to why that's a problem. Anyway. The other option was to fly the F-18. If I was a nicer person I would have done that. And why the F-18? You might want to know, because the DCS F-18 has zero force feedback, which is kind of unfortunate, because the actual F-18 has a pretty interesting setup for its controller, and none of that is modeled in the game. But why would I showcase a plane that doesn't have force feedback at all in a review like this? Well, that's the other side of the coin, because I think the major selling point here is that just because of the incredible feel of the stick as it is, plus the incredible adjustability it has. Okay, this is basically the review right here. It is by far the best joystick base I have ever seen tried or anything like that. It's like miles ahead of everything else before you enable force feedback. And if I was a nicer guy, I would be flying the Hornet right now and showcasing you how awesome it is in like the other worst case scenario. But I'm not a nice guy, so we are not. So we are now in the dry deck. So I guess that's pretty much the review right there, so thank you for watching, give me money, I don't know how, but you come up with a way. So, if you're still here, uh, let me explain a bit further. First of all, about a year ago I made an article comparing all the state-of-the-art normal sticks like the VKB Win Win Virpil and stuff, Thrustmaster. And well I'm not going to tell you how that went. You know, buy the magazine, you cheap bastards. So basically I didn't find any of those to be massively better than the other. Everything every one of them had the good sides and the bad sides. And if you have noticed, all of these uh, manufacturers who make these spring-based sticks have come up with some kind of a dry clutch or a damper system. And by the way, another thing you can see in there is the MFG pedals and they do have a hydraulic damper. And the reason for that is because springs are inherently pretty bad for controllers, to be honest. Uh, especially my modified Cougar I used for 20 years and I loved it and it was kind of awesome. But you could like conduct an orchestra with it, like push it going and it'll keep going forever. 
and when you start it you thought the inertia and weight of the Cougar that's like four tons and then you swing it to one side and then you fight to stop the stick when actually it's not supposed to be about inertia it's supposed to be about resistance down there at the very base of the stick and you get all kind of dampers and stuff to do that for you and I never got any of those dampers to work in a bearable manner I basically couldn't stand them I tried the Naya gel sheet and all that stuff and I just couldn't get rid of the sticks and that could be me and there are definitely different degrees of allergy to that kind of stuff but I'm highly allergic to sticks and springiness so keep that in mind this is of course also to an extent my own opinion on what I like but I tend to like good stuff so maybe it's worth listening to but the thing here is and why this stick is so far ahead of everything else is that straight out of the box basically it just feels like it just the perfect blend of uh, resistance that feels like airflow and dampening built in. Now let's make one thing clear. Uh, yes, you can kind of feel the machinery working in here if you really, really try. And I have never seen or tried a joystick where I couldn't feel the mechanism working but this is super smooth and people and for very good reason people are concerned about the motors and how you could feel them doing their stuff and yes that's absolutely what happens when the Rhino is powered off but when it's powered on that basically pretty much disappears entirely and you stop feeling any of it and it's essentially as smooth as any other stick I've tried it's co at least it's comparable to everything else so it's not worse and that's kind of magical and that's one of my biggest worries just completely blown away and so my biggest worries were uh, the feel of the motors and then the durability and the motors don't feel at all that's perfect durability I don't know and then the third biggest fear was overheating and if you look up there you probably already realize that that's exactly why we are here today I knew I was going to have to admit that this was the best thing I have ever tried and to kind of offset that I wanted to show you the very worst case scenario you could get into with this stick. And I can already hear the annoying whine of the fans running and that's what the Rhino does when it starts uh, getting close to overheating it starts the fans and then it will start to reduce the force until it reaches the point where the fans can keep the motors cool enough and that is already happening here and the sound of the fans is actually quite annoying but then again I have a, this fan in here running and it's well not annoying actually but it's quite loud and Usually you don't pay attention that much to the fan, so it's not a problem for you. But it is the loudest and most annoying part of my entire computer right now. And yeah, it's not ideal to lose some of the strength on your stick. But so far I have never run into a situation where the game wasn't comfortably controllable with the settings it's still giving me. I have run pretty extensive testing and 
I have managed to overheat it mostly well like this and then by flying the hornet repeatedly in a dogfight restart 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 but everything I have tested this right here is the only thing that actually stresses the rhino out under normal mission load like for World War II stuff you do such small movements of the stick that it never overheats of course depending on your settings but I'm using max power and linear response it virtually never overheats in World War II then modern planes they have enough power to pull on the stick hard enough long enough for the stick to start overheating if you restart the mission over and over again straight from the fight because those planes do have power but they run out of fuel very fast so they won't be able to keep up the fight too long also just a note for fairness sake I did fly a bit before so the Rhino started warm, so it's overheating a little bit faster than it would if I started from basically a cold start. So that's it about overheating and uh, it's important that you understand that when you're looking at the numbers over there, 50 degrees is where the protection starts to kick in and it's over 80 degrees where shit starts to go really badly wrong. I can't see the dent, so I'm just hoping that we are not reaching it, and so far I'm still feeling quite a lot of force here, so we are probably not even close to anything dangerous. And this is, well, I'd like to say a comfortable amount of force when it's actually not. If you paid, that, paid any attention, I've been switching hands and so on, because this is kind of stressful for me, keeping pushing on the stick all the time. If I was actively flying the DR-1, I would probably cheat and lower the forces a bit. And the overheating is of course a function of the amount of force you use. So if you lower the maximum force, you will reduce overheating massively. So all in all, Although the overheating thing isn't perfect, I would prefer it to never overheat at all. But it's entirely passable, it happens rarely, and when it happens, the Rhino handles it pretty nicely. So it's not a problem. So I can safely say that I'm not at all worried about that, and I think it's fine. Now you have to understand that when we talk about overheating, it's kind of unavoidable because as I said this is totally exceptional plane almost no plane ever flies like this that I'm having to push hard all the time and because of that it wouldn't make any sense to design the stick to handle maximum force for forever basically because the way you do that is you reduce the maximum amount of force so much that it will never overheat and the result is that you get very low maximum force and you waste a lot of the potential because the system will never be even close to actually overheating in normal flight and as I said before but this is really important to understand Yes, the Rhino is currently in overheat protection during a very normal mission. This is one of the missions included with the game. And I'm flying it perfectly normally, just like you would, and the Rhino is overheating. Or in the overheat protection. But this is a very rare specific exception to the rule. Normally that doesn't really happen. But luckily, and in combination with that, when the Rhino starts overheating, it's not very dramatic, so I'm pretty confident in stating that it's not a problem at all. 
but still it's kind of a dick move to fly a review in a fucking Trideke because it really is the only problematic place. Anyway, uh, then there's something to be said about the software. It's like amazing, I would say. Of course it's quite a lot simpler than the VKB and other stuff because the Rhino software doesn't do very complicated things with the buttons and functions. But it does have fantastic adjustability for the stick. And like, for example, recently I've been playing around with uh, dampening or damper, or artificial damper, or whatever you want to call it. It's very nice for, for example, the Hornet. I don't know if it's that awesome in this plane. Kind of fine. But there are just tick boxes and sliders, and you can do whatever you want. And the software support is great, and it develops constantly. And then there's this Telem FFP project, open source stuff, that adds effects into DCS and maybe at some point other simulators too in the planes that don't have native support. And that's going to be interesting for the future. Personally so far I've only done the vanilla thing. I haven't really played with the Telem FFP yet. So all of my experiences are based on what you get out of the box. So, there's actually, I would say, well, the overheating isn't really a problem for the Rhino. It's a thing that exists and Rhino handles it pretty well, I think. But there is actually one issue I would like to point out in the design. Uh, the one thing I kind of don't really like about this is that uh, and it's not actually a personal problem, but if you look at the stick, it's pretty long out here. This only works in a middle stick configuration. And my stick is kind of long and that's fine. For me, this is pretty much the perfect size. However, if I try to measure down here, I would say about that much of it is like just a rhino. Normally when you look at a stick, the attachment point for the grip is right on top of the base. And for rhino you get about this much extra stuff. So if you want it, fine, you get a free extra extension on top of the 800 euros, so nice, good. But if you don't want that, then that kind of limits your options for own extensions. And I kind of think that the reason Valmes did it that way is there's like a leather cover on top, like most... Well, it's not real leather, but there's a cover on top, like on most bases, to keep the dust out and so on. And that works much better because it's attached on top of this extension instead of at the level of the base. And I'm not sure if that's the reason why they did it, but that's one of the plus sides of doing it like they did. But the problem is that if you, for example, don't have a cutout in your seat like I do, and I can bring the stick really close, so that doesn't bother me very much. But if you, for example, needed a S bend, we don't talk about Z bends here, that's not a good brand. But if you want an S bend for your stick, like real planes have, to bring it closer to you, uh, that's going to be a problem, because they are very tall usually. And the Rhino already has an extension built in, so... Personally, I would really like to see uh, an option where you can either have this, what, what's there right now, like the built-in extension, or a shorter stick where the attachment point for the grip is directly at the level of the base. 
I think that's pretty much the one James I would like to see in the design. And personally, like I said, that's not even a big deal for me because together with the VKB adapter and the built-in extension, this is just about the length I wanted. But that's basically a lucky coincidence, mostly. And it would probably be better if we didn't need lucky coincidences here. So, oh by the way, one thing that's really important for the Rhino is that when I was reviewing all this other manufacturer's stuff, uh, I couldn't find the perfect combination of base and grip. This is the best grip I, I've ever used, it's the VKB MCTU. But the VKB base wasn't the very favorite base for me. And this Rhino thing here, it basically allows you to use any grip you want, and that's fantastic. You might need a little bit awkward adapter, like I do for the VKB, and you need one for the win-win, but that's okay, at least you can use those. And I think I should be participating in the action, but I'm too busy reviewing my stick, so I'm not. But anyway, yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about the Rhino this time. And notice how little I actually talked about the effects, because uh, the effects there are, or the lack of it, is largely due to the games we play, or the people who make the planes. And the TeleMFFA project is interesting and it's coming up, but it's in fairly early stages right now, if I understood correctly. I won't say too much about that. And it's kind of amazing that there's as much support for force feedback as there is, considering how little hardware has been available recently. And all I can say is I really hope to see a resurgence of force feedback sticks in the more affordable categories, and pedals. I, wa I really want those pedals. By the way, Valmis, Milan, do something about it. I want the pedals. And, yeah. To recap, it's the best base ever. It's not perfect, nothing in this world is. Is it worth 800 euros? Well, that's completely up to you. If you are like me and you are like totally crazy, or you are rich, then of course it's worth it. And maybe you should go ask your local asylum if you can take a rhino there, because that's where you are headed if you are anything like me. And yeah. At least you'll have fun in the asylum. And I think I've showcased most of the features of the Rhino here. Like the... Well, you can't see how good it feels to fly with it, but... You'll have to take my word for it. Usually not advice, but this time I'm right. And you have seen some of the effects. And you have seen the overheating problem, which is frankly not a huge problem, as you may have noticed. I'm flying happily and it's actually still very strong. Like, it's very comfortably strong. And by the way, when we are talking about how strong the Rhino is, it's not like 200 kilos pulling with two hands, unfortunately, but that's not realistic expectation anyway. But it is in the ballpark of all the other manufacturer sticks at their highest settings. So it is what you would expect of a stick that is of high quality state of the art basically. So it is strong enough. And when it comes to overheating, 
I'm thinking that most people would actually run it at lower settings and then the overheating would be even less of a problem for you. I think that one camera is actually having some overheating problems. And I think he just went down. So overheating can be a big problem, but it's not really for the vine. Okay. So there you go. Essentially the best stick base ever made. And I really didn't want to say that and showcase you the best case scenario at the same time. I think that's too much. And my conscience couldn't handle it. I have to be a little bit of a dick, so that's why we are flying the drive again. And if Walmis is watching, I hope he got at least a little nervous when he saw what I was doing. So that this isn't like just pure pleasure for him. But all I can say is that I, that I commend him on a job really well done. The Rhino feels like an amazing design and some incredible product that I absolutely love so far. And in one way it's really not perfect. Or in many ways it's not perfect. But in some sense it's actually better than perfect because when I one year ago started to look for a new stick I would use, I didn't expect to find something this awesome in a one year's time. I think that's a lot of praise, so I hope this Worst case scenario gameplay from a Fokker as offsets that base a little bit. And you wouldn't believe how fun it is to finally fly the game and getting this awesome feel from my controller. Even though as you can clearly see it's now well it's in the overheat protection, it's not actually trying straight out overheating yet but it's kind of overheating during normal mission load and I'm not dying because of it I'm actually still quite comfortable with how it's working out I'm not comfortable with how much firepower that Sobit can suck out I'm not not a zombie plane if I ever saw it Holy shit. It must be because of the Rhino, because I'm bird. Okay, now it's... Well, his overheat protection just turned off. And that must be the Rhino's fault, because I am otherwise a perfect shot, so yeah, no, it's not perfect. If it was perfect, I wouldn't have missed all those shots. I would have killed the pilot instantly. So clearly it's not. And in this case I actually haven't even showcased the main selling point of the stick, but what it actually does do, if I take this plane closer to the edge of the envelope, is that it st starts shaking on me before it crashes out into a spin. And that is an actually really really super mega useful feature. Don't crash in the wind, please. So, I'll just demonstrate that for you. Let's go, 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 go. Fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm completely fine, I'm completely fine. Um, so now I'm not completely fine. And the stick didn't completely save me, but it gave me a little bit of water. And of course the amount of that varies per plane. But if force feedback did only that, it would be worth it. 
and of course I have to still mention one thing which is helicopters and if you don't have force feedback you haven't flown helicopters properly just a side note because that's like just pure awesome on a force feedback thing and pure not awesome on a not force feedback thing and the main point for the future is first of all what kind of software support we get I really hope to start seeing more intricate force feedback support and more force feedback support to begin with and I really want to see more force feedback controllers like for example the pedals please Valmis Milan get going quickly I mean the MFG pedals are nice especially with the damper but I want force feedback and I want it now and I mean Win Win kind of hinted of a force feedback or an auto throttle I don't know if that's coming or if it's useful but I still kind of want it I'm kind of excited about it but the main thing is that the force feedback is now back on the menu and it's awesome it's everything I wanted and in some ways it's more And I guess that's pretty much it for this. Far too long a video. But I did give you the TLDR version, so if you wasted this much of your life, it's your own fault. I'm not going to fly back and land, but I'll just give you a spoiler. The stick isn't going to explode from overheating. It's going to keep screaming its fans at me and possibly reduce the force but I have to admit this far into the overheat protection it's still giving me a reasonable amount of resistance and I'm having to work for every meter I fly so that's it good work Valmis I hate to have to say this but it's awesome and I hope that my being a dick with this proper offset this review a bit because it sounds too much like praise and too little reviewing stuff but I'm kind of happy that sometimes I get to do this also and as I said it up, it's up to you to decide if it's worth it for you but the question is how much is the best joystick base ever made worth for you for me, well, I'd like to say it was worth the 800 bucks or euros or a kidney or whatever. But anyway, thanks for watching and give me all the money you have if you find some way so I can be a professional YouTuber. See you or not, I don't know.